Hey everyone, this is Darwin. I'm a Staff Solutions Architect in GitLab's Alliances. Wanted to take you through a guided exploration today called Git Diff Revision Activity Metrics. So this came from a specific customer challenge. The customer kind of asked an open-ended question, can we get an estimate for how much effort will be required to process a given merge request? And this was especially in the context of being inbound from another team. So sometimes these merge requests are not known to be being prepared and they come in uh, kind of a, a sideways, so to speak. One of the interesting things was they were thinking it in terms of complexity. And so that triggered a few thoughts and led me down a few trails that I want to kind of go over as we go through the explanation here. But first, I just want to talk a little bit about what a guided exploration is, because that's the format that I'll be reviewing with you. What a guided exploration is, is open source template that is also a working example. So, so many templates and snippets don't actually work. And many times you find out that an innocent five line uh, piece of code takes another 40, 50 lines to actually make it work in the real world. And so these are working examples, which makes sure that they're, the level of complexity that is really required to get the job done. They can be directly used for demonstrations, but they can also be directly inspected for learning. And then importantly, they can be duplicated for either improving on them or as a basis for a real project that you might want to start. And then they live at this location on uh, GitLab. I'd like to start out by taking a look at the solution as it worked out, kind of the graphical front end elements. And later we'll take a look at the code. So we're in a project that uses this as an extension. So the actual code is in another project and we include it into this project. And when we go through the code walkthrough, you'll see how that works. But the first thing I wanna do is go over here to merge requests. And we can see that our merge requests here have labels associated with them. And those were assigned by this uh, extension. So the first thing I wanna look at is the ability to select merge requests. So at this level, we only, all of them have a label and the same label, so it won't make sense to select them at this level. But if we had 50 merge requests here and they had different labels, we could do the selection here. But I'm also gonna show you that at a higher level, we can do the selection. So even though these labels are in this project specifically, if I go to the top level of this hierarchy where there are a lot more merge requests, I can still uh, use this to select things at the top level. So if you're using this uh, capability across many uh, repositories, then you'll be able to still uh, pick it out at the top uh, higher level. So that's a really cool uh, feature of GitLab is the labels flow up in order to do selectivity up uh, with the merge requests. Let's dig into a specific merge request and we'll go into this one. There are a couple attributes to notice here. So one of the things is that we have the label over here on the right with the rest of the labels. But we also have the time estimate here. Uh, both of these are optional. You can label or not label them, and you can decide whether to do time estimates. And if you do time estimates, you can pick the factor, the multiplication factor of how many minutes uh, from the revision factor. Those two things are evident right here at this level. But one of the really cool uh, things is we've used expose as a special keyword of GitLab to expose an artifact right here in the merge request level. So when I click code revision estimate, we get a, an actual artifact that I built during the job. Uh, let's go through this a little bit. This combines the output of two utilities, SCC or source code counter, which has a, uh, some interesting metrics, and then git diff. So initially git diff is used to get the list of files that have changed and how many lines are added and removed, and then that's pushed through uh, SCC. So at the top here, we have what mode we're in, because this also works for comparing two branches. Um, we're in merge request mode, and we, we show what git refs we are comparing together. And then from SCC, we have the language of the file that's uh, being uh, analyzed. Then the file name from SCC as well. The total lines from SCC. And then SCC has a complexity metric, and you can read up on that and try to understand if it is uh, to your liking. It's currently not used in the revision factor calculation or the estimated minutes of this a particular extension, but if you wanted to customize it, you could. We then have the git added lines and the git removed lines. And if you're familiar with git, uh, it tracks this from revision history. So the, the added and removed lines can end up being more than the actual file lines if there's been a lot of activity or if it's a new file and you revised it lots of times in this first commit. 
And anytime you see the total file lines matching either added lines or removed lines, then that file was most likely either added newly or completely deleted. The revision factor has a simple calculation, which is also here on the screen. It's basically um, taking the git moves and the git adds, which are line counts, divided by the total file lines, multiplied by a thousand uh, for default, but it's configurable. So if you set revision multiplier factor, then you can configure this to be something else. And that's how we get the revision factor. We do it on a per file basis, which kind of gives you an idea of how much each file is changing. And then we do it across the totals. So that's a uh, revision factor. It's purposely not a percentage. Uh, you could do any factor you wanted. So the idea is to try to stay away from percentages, kind of like agile planning. Estimated review minutes. In this case, we can see down here that under configuration variables that the revision factor to minutes conversion percent is 10%. So 74.7 rounded up is 75. You can change that percentage to whatever you want, whether it's smaller or over 100, in order to get something that's uh, tuned to your liking. Now, the variables for configuring this extension are all overridable at a project level or a group level. So individual teams could actually play around with the numbers to tune it up for a given repository or for an entire team. So the configurability is there at whatever level it's needed. Uh, so that's our HTML artifact that shows us uh, all the details of what's going on with our analytics. We're gonna go back to the merge request and I'm gonna dig into the jobs for a minute. So you could potentially leave that artifact completely out and not put it into expose as or in artifacts at all, because we use a little utility to convert HTML to ASCII. So right here, I have the exact same information. It's actually just that HTML file converted into text and displayed uh, within the log. So you could potentially keep this part kind of background information if you wanted to. And then we'll go back, and I just want to show you that we're also using uh, something in GitLab called .env support. And this is a different job, a completely different job. But right here, we've passed the data, revision factor, revision level, and review minutes all forward into the pipeline. So .env allows me to create pipeline level variables and then also pass those pipeline uh, variables into each job. Um, but we're able to create pipeline level variables. That's a pretty cool little capability and it's worked uh, right into the extension for you. So that's kind of an overview of what the front end looks like as far as trying to get our hands around, you know, how much time might it take to review a uh, given merge request. Now there's a lot of variability here that is not taken into account by analyzing the code. Uh, also, you'll find unusual situations where this could be uh, wildly inaccurate uh, because of the way git diffs work and the underlying SCC utility. It might be possible for you to tune it up and get it working in a reasonable fashion for a given scenario. Now let's take a look at the flow of the CI code so we can kind of understand how this is uh, all put together and accomplished. The first thing is we use git diff, and git diff is going to give us a certain amount of data. Specifically, git will give us an isolated list of changed files. So you might have 50,000 files in your project, and it's going to say, oh, these three changed. It also has the important information of how many lines were added and how many were removed on a per file basis. We then use the source code counting tool, and this is a tool that I came upon in another project, and I actually used some of the code from that project to seed this one. And it does some additional metrics that are really interesting. You can find the code language on a per file basis, what kind of code language is in there, the total lines, the code only lines, and a complexity metric that they add. Uh, it's a very simple metric, uh, but it tries to understand, you know, how complex is this code uh, aside from just sheer uh, file count. Now we've got two sets of data from two different utilities about each file in the mix. The next level is to take a look at calculating a revision factor and a revision level. Now, I purposely avoided the concept of complexity at this point because we, we can tell that a lot of revisions happened, but it's really hard to then very strongly reason to complexity. So because of that, we tell you, you know, a factor of how much change has gone on, a very simple formula. And then we also talk about on the diff level. So on a per file level, this is available, and on a per diff level. 
The next thing we do is an HTML report. So we create a nice HTML table with that per file data as well as a summary for the entire diff. And then we convert the HTML to ASCII. So there's a nice little utility that will just take HTML and convert it to ASCII. So it creates a nice fixed width table of the same information. And what this lets us do is emit it to the CI log so that you can very conveniently see it there. Then we use the merge request API to actually tag the merge request with labels. We only do this if we're in a merge request because you can also run this whole flow for a branch. Uh, we create uh, these labels on the fly so they don't have to be pre-created labels. And then finally, through artifact collection, we collect the HTML artifact and we use something special called the expose as GitLab CI keyword. And what that does is it surfaces it right into the merge request. So you saw how we had very convenient capability to uh, go right from the merge request into the report. So that's the basic flow of the code. So now we're gonna dig into the code. What I will do is um, open up the uh, web IDE here on this branch. And the first thing we're gonna discover is that this code is implemented as uh, what we call a plugin. So right down here, there's just a very a bunch of variables in a very brief job right here, diff revision analytics. And it says that it's in the sta this stage and it extends diff revision stats. So if you look here, we have this include and the include is where the real code is. So I show you that because that's a really cool capability because then we can, within GitLab, use this code again and again throughout all of our projects without the need to make copies of it and then have to update it in all those projects. So this is the actual, what I call CI-CD extension that is being used. So it's here by itself. And within this, uh, we have a fairly extensive readme and guided exploration that tells you about a lot of the patterns that are in use. Uh, the features that are capable with the particular guided exploration. In this case, it's telling you, hey, you can override the thresholds for low, medium, high, and extreme amount of changes, which that would allow you to use the same code everywhere, but certain projects or entire group hierarchies override what they consider a high or a medium or a low. If we look into the code itself, which is right here, we can see the actual code of the solution. Now, one of the aspects here is that in order for this to not run or be kind of like a, a GitLab function, we do the dot uh, indicator right in front of it and it kind of hides this. And then if you noticed in the other CI file, we did extends in this exact same name. So then this is how we kind of make it into a function and extends is how we then use that function. We'll just go through a few details here. It's important that this does not run at times it should not. And so that's what these rules are doing. It's preventing it from running at certain times or enabling it for, to run at certain times. Uh, as we go down a little bit farther, um, there's a bunch of logic about what branches to use and then whether we're in a merge request or not, and then what kind of diff to use. So all of this primes us to have the right kind of uh, diff operation. Let's see, I don't have word wrap on. I will open web IDE just to get the word wrap on. Uh, so we're going to go back down to that line. And this is actually a great big, huge one-liner. If you wanted to and you re-implement, you could cut it up. But basically, our git diff command is here in the first part. And then it pushes into a great big awk command. Uh, the calculation is in the awk command uh, in these two locations. And so you could change that. You could potentially take the complexity measure of SCC into account because it currently doesn't do that. Uh, you could do a variety of different things with that calculation uh, that meets your particular algorithmic requirements. Um, back in the report, we, we mentioned be careful because, you know, the algorithm you think you're targeting or what you think you're assessing with a certain calculation here might be different. Um, so I came to the conclusion that uh, complexity is a, a challenging thing to discern from these numbers. Um, but uh, the amount of change activity is not. So I kind of recharacterize it as change activity. As we go down a little farther here, uh, right here we have the install of W3M, which is that utility which dumps HTML into nicely formatted ASCII, and then it dumps it right afterwards. We also take the revision factor and output it to the revision factor vars env env file here. And that is how GitLab passes this stuff down the pipeline. If we go down a little bit further, uh, we can see that we then also calculate the uh, medium, low, high label. And then down here, 
in artifacts is where we collect this stuff. So this first one here says, collect this HTML and expose it in the merge request with this name. And so that's what you saw early uh, in, the, in the video. And then this next one is .env. And what that's saying is, read the content in this file and make it into pipeline variables uh, dynamically so that it's available in the rest of the pipeline. So that's a, a basic overview of the code and kind of how it all comes together in order to create this solution. So let's take a look at uh, the resource pointers. These should also be in the comments or uh, description area under the video. But we have the git diff revision activity metrics extension. So that's the actual code that does this work. Because it's implemented as an extension, it's in a different repository than the one that uses it. The one that I showed you that uses it is uh, right here git revision activity analytics demo. So that kind of shows you how it actually works. So I hope that taking a little bit of time to look at this kind of solution quest and how it was solved and some other details about GitLab guided explorations as well as the code implementation have been helpful to you. And if you need any help with GitLab in any way, feel free to reach out to our sales department and we can take a look at enabling you on GitLab. Thanks everyone.